being the psychology major that I am, I said today I want to teach you guys about something called classical conditioning. And classical conditioning is one of the ways in which we learn. And so one of the most popular or famous incidences of classical conditioning would be Pavlov and his dog. So I will use my dog, Sparky. He's been in a couple videos. This is Sparky, by the way. I also called him Rupert um, before. Actually, William Cumberdale called him Rupert. That's his name. But this is Sparky. Anyways, I will use him to illustrate this concept somewhat, I suppose. Anyways, Pavlov was wanting to study digestion and saliva production in dogs. So he inserted this tube thingy called a cannula into like his gland thingy right here to, yeah, to collect the saliva. So the researchers would give the dog meat powder. Yum, yum, yum. So the um, meat powder made them salivate and the meat powder um, salivation in the presence of um, food is an unconditioned response to an unconditioned stimulus. Um, basically, um, the unconditioned stimulus is the meat powder or food, and the unconditioned response is salivation because it's something that he doesn't learn to do. He, when he sees something he likes, he is going to salivate because that's just something that you normally do when you think about food or when you see when you see your food you're like oh yummy food meat powder yum 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 so anyways what he noticed was that the dogs started to salivate whenever they saw the person who fed them so he's like oh she feeds me <sighs> yummy i'm excited i'm gonna get food so they thought maybe um so pavlov thought maybe um, perhaps what would happen if the person who fed them was there, but they didn't get food, would they still salivate? And um, so this would mean that it's an unconditioned stimulus. I, the person who feeds Sparky, am the unconditioned stimulus. I'm here, you know, but he might be, you know, pairing me with the conditioned stimulus, which is the food, something he's learned to respond to. And so then he'll respond to me by salivating. So just by seeing me, he associates that with food. So what he did to actually test this was he would ring a bell whenever he's about to feed them. Ding, 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 yum, 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 food. So he repeated this a few times. And then after a while, he would ring the bell, ding, 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 ding. But there's no food. But he still salivated. <sighs> Anyways. Um, so they, get, <laughs> they still salivated because they associated getting the food, the unconditioned stimulus, and the bell, the conditioned stimulus, the thing they learned to associate with the um, food. And um, after repeating the incidents of not getting the food when the bell was rung, then after a while, he stopped salivating because he's like, well, maybe I won't get food. Boo-hoo. I'm sad. No food for you, Sparky. Sorry. So, that's part of the experience, the, that's called extinction. So, after a while of having the unconditioned stimulus without the conditioned stimulus, then he stops responding altogether. So, yeah, so they recognized that the bell rung, but they weren't going to get food, so they stopped responding, even though the bell rung. Thank you, Sparky. Okay. So we can relate this also to how people learn things, and especially phobias. One example would be children are naturally afraid of loud sounds. We are born with the fear of loud sounds because that could mean something's dangerous. And usually people aren't born with a fear of animals. But if you pair an, a small animal, like let's say Sparky again, let's say you pair Sparky, and you put him in the room with the kid, la la la, and the whole picture of this beautiful animal. Anyways, he's, he's so adorable. Anyways, so you pair him with him, and then you p you play a loud sound, like bong! So they hear the loud sound and the animal together at the same time, they're going to start associating the animal with the loud, scary sound. So the animal, who isn't scared to begin with, you know, if, if it comes around, but there's still no loud, scary sound, 
there might they might still be afraid of the animal because they're they associate that with a scary noise. So that's similar studies to that have been done with like this little baby named Albert and a rat and a gall. So that so that's it's a real study and so it's happened. And one interesting thing about is that I, that I thought about is the extinction and how some it seems like it might take certain people or animals longer to um, have a, their con their conditioned response extinct with like after they haven't been getting their unconditioned stimulus. So like people who are addicted to something like a drug, they associate feeling good with the drug, but after a time the body stops reacting as strongly to the drug, but they're still addicted to it. So they're going to keep doing the actions and keep, you know, you know, injecting or snorting, whatever. Um, even though they are not getting the, um, the same, uh, results from it because that's what they're expecting because they associate the good happy feelings with the drug and even though they're not getting the good happy feelings they're still trying to take the drug to get those good happy feelings so the drug and the feelings is, they associate with it so it's, it's harder for the user to stop his behavior because he's expecting something to happen but it's not happening so this kind of makes me wonder about you know relationships between people and you know if, if someone's in a Good or bad, good or bad relationship, and then it, yeah, it's a story for another time. I'll share that some other time. But now you know a little bit more about classical conditioning, and hopefully all the psycho mumbo jumbo did not go over your head. Peace out.